Hi YouTube. Last week uh, CNBC came out with an article and uh, they were talking about how household debt was on the rise. They t discussed uh, how mortgage debt was rising, auto loans were rising, uh, student loans were rising, as well as credit card debt. And they spun them all as a positive, okay? And <laughs> You know, I've always been of the belief that CNBC will sometimes spin negative headlines because it's really in their best interest for people to feel good about the market because, well, that keeps their ratings high. So sometimes you'll see really, uh, really odd views on the economy, and I, and I think this kind of fit that bill. Now, understand, I, rec I recognize that uh, that mortgage debt going up is actually a positive. I recognize that even auto loan debt is going up as a, as a positive. But student loan and credit card debt, absolutely not. Um, so, you know, I'd like to talk about, I'd like to relay my own personal experience with credit card debt because I know a lot of you are fighting that. Um, I want you to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and, and perhaps give you some words of encouragement. Um, you know, since I've gotten out of debt, I've, I've put myself in a, a pretty strong position for me, okay? And understand, everything is relative, right? If, uh, if Josh Galt woke up tomorrow in my exact position, he'd wonder how it all went so horribly wrong, <laughs> okay? So everything is relative, and I, and I recognize that, and, that, and that's okay. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I love that saying, you know, the first rule of being in a hole is to stop digging. So, uh, you know, if you find yourself in this position, the first thing that you've got to do is stop digging. But uh, going back to that CNBC article... I actually think that credit card debt is rising because of this horrible winter that we've been going through. Um, you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, just so you know, uh, for me personally, uh, through December, January, and now February, uh, our heating costs every month has been $450, okay? And that's much higher than what we would normally see. So that has taken a huge bite out of our household income. And uh, I know that other people are going through something similar. And I think that's that's what you're seeing is you're seeing higher credit card debt because people have to put other necessities on their credit cards and they're falling further behind. I just simply don't see that as a net positive. You know, the, the tough thing about, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. The tough thing about credit card debt is you can explain your mortgage, right? I have a house payment. I'm living in a house. There it is. Bang. You know, you can explain your car loan. Well, I got a car loan, and there's my car, and okay, I make my car loan payment. Credit card debt is literally a physical reminder every single month of your inability to live within your means. Okay, and that's that's tough. And you know, if you can't live within your means now, as your credit card debt grows, how are you going to live within your means then? The answer is you can't. And the problem is deleveraging is a terribly painful process. It's a painful process for individuals, it's a painful process for companies, and it's a painful process for governments. And that's why you rarely see it. Okay? Because nobody likes pain. <laughs> you know, you'd kinda you know everybody nobody nobody changes when you're seeing the status quo. That's one of my biggest frustrations with uh with the way that the government is being run now is because you know, the proverbial storm clouds are gathering, but there's no political will to do anything painful to fix anything. They, they just aren't. They, they don't want to get ahead of the problem, they, they, but they react to crisis. Okay? And it's the same thing as an individual. You know, uh, you will react to credit card debt when it became, becomes such a painful uh, piece of your life or when the banks literally shut off your credit lines. My wife and I, when we, uh, when we first got married... We actually had to put the, almost the entire wedding on credit cards, okay? And we were literally trying to cut every corner and, and, and do the cheapest wedding we could and still maintain quality. But we still ended up spending fourteen dollars to $15,000 on the thing, okay? And with our incomes, that was a recipe for disaster. And, uh, you know, it was painful. And it was, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that our early marriage survived it because there was a few years there where um, first of all when we're on our honeymoon I, I basically put my foot down and I said look I said we're gonna have to address this uh, this credit card but let's just have a, a nice honeymoon and we'll worry about it when we get back well we worried about it and I'm using air quotes here 
but four or five months later, we still literally had more debt than when I had put my foot down. And now I, th I thought to myself, okay, well now we have to take really drastic measures here because I see where this is going. So we both ended up getting uh, second jobs. I, I, you know, and I don't know if it was masochistic on my part, self-loathing, kind of a way to punish myself. But uh, I worked 12 hour days and then what I'd do is when I got home, I would go work at the grocery store for four or five hours, help break down freight uh, for the night team. And uh, <laughs> I'd end up working till midnight or one o'clock and I'd come home, sleep for a few hours and, and rinse and repeat. And it was just all to make just enough money to start uh, getting some positive momentum with paying down our bills. And my wife got a second job as well. Well, what that led to is uh, a lot of arguing. Um, you know, when we were finally together, we were both exhausted, and uh, there was a lot of displaced anger there. You know, people talk about how money is the number one uh, issue uh, that couples fight about. I'll go with you one better. Um, not only is it the number one issues that couples fight about, but it also ends up in, in, uh, causing other arguments they don't even realize. I, I think there's a lot of displaced anger going on with couples with financial difficulties. You know, you end up finding yourself arguing about really stupid things. You know, the proverbial throwing your socks on the floor and, and you, it turns into a fight. Well, you're not really angry about the socks on the floor so much as you're angry about your financial position, right? And, uh, you know, one thing that we had to do is we just had to get that situation fixed. And, you know, I can tell you this. I can't promise a lot of things I can promise you that if you remove that debt cloud, if you get rid of that debt monkey off your back, things will get better. I'm just telling you, that's the one thing that I that's the one thing I can promise you is your outlook will change. You give yourself a cushion. Okay? This is the most important thing is to have a cushion in your household budget. So right now, I'm not buying as much silver as I'd like to buy. Okay? Understood. And I can live with that. What I can't live is this growing pile of debt. There's a huge difference there. And uh, yeah, the last three months have been difficult from a f household financial position, but it's okay. Because I know that the winter is coming close to, uh, to ending here, mercifully. And I, I know that things will normalize. So, you know, maybe I won't have as good of a year as I had hoped going into it, uh, you know, from a, from a savings perspective. Okay. But at least I'm not adding on to an already existing problem. Okay, so I'd like to encourage you guys to, if you have credit card debt and, and you're just kind of fighting that, you know, do whatever you got to do, but get it paid down. Even if it means putting a silver buying and gold buying on hold, you know, get that debt paid off. Make sure that you're paying nothing to the banks as far as interest goes. You know, those banks are really happy to go to the Fed discount window and get money for basically nothing and then charge you 20%, okay? I mean, that's just not cool. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, I'm more than happy to work within the system as aggressively as I can and take advantage of, uh, you know, special offers from the banks because I know that they're making so much money from, from doing what they're doing and preying on people that I don't mind getting that pound of flesh back. That's just kind of how I, uh, how I operate on that. But, um, you know, do what you got to do and get that debt paid off. I've, I've been hearing from a lot of you about how you have some positive momentum on that front, and that's why I wanted to do this video and, and, and just tell you to kind of keep your chin up and, and keep fighting it because, uh, you know, I'm telling you, it'll pay off in the long run.